Ahoy and welcome. I am the Pirate Tester. And today I'd like to talk to you about how I make a test case matrix, which is predominantly done using uh, decision tables, sometimes known as truth tables. Um, so I'm going to give you a premise, a requirement that I would need you to test. This is loosely based on something that I have done for real. And I'll go into more detail in a bit. So to start with, we are going to want to delete some customers from our tables. So if you've seen some of my previous videos, then you know I'm very like SQL and data experienced. So we've got some customer data and we need to delete it, but where specific conditions are true. So we need to delete them only where the customer has no account, where the customer has no ID with us, and where the customer was contacted more than 12 months ago. So only if all of those conditions are true, would we delete them? So the first thing I would do from there is I would think about what are my options for all of these things? So they either have an account or they don't very much. That's it. And a similar thing with ID, you either we do have your ID on the system or we don't have your ID on the system. If we did have it and it's no longer there, well, we don't have it anymore. And if it is there, it's there. And then for contacts, I've gone for um, some boundary value. So if this is something you're aware of, it's where you look at um, what your threshold is and then the smallest increments either side. So we'd say that a customer could be contacted less than 12 months ago exactly 12 months ago to the day and more than 12 months ago, which is what we're looking for. So the reason for the middle one is to make sure that we're not looking if someone was contacted equal to or more than 12 months ago, because you might then be getting people more than a day apart. So with two options, two options and three options, that as a collective group, that gives us 12 potential options, or as I ominously write, or is there? So in theory, there are 12 different things we could do, which sounds nice and simple. But as you start adding extra requirements, it can get messier and messier and messier. So we might say we only want to test these three things. But then what happens if we wanted to add extra rules? So we weren't all. We can't delete a customer if they have ever had a complaint with us. We can't delete a customer if we've ever given them advice on something. We can't delete them for this reason, this reason, this reason, or we can own, or we must delete them if they've done something else instead. So, if they've applied for a certain product, we go, we just don't want that data anymore. Don't know why you would. It's not something we did, but I'm just trying to think of inverting it. So, in theory, there's twelve potential options. So how do you work out what all your combinations are? So with that, that is where I make my decision matrix. And these act as what tests I want to do. So you think about what all the conditions you're looking for. And then ultimately, I delete them or I don't. So we've got if they haven't to do with if they have an account with our ID, with our contact. So if they have no account, no ID. Oh, this is really weird. Wrong way around. Uh, and they contacted was more than 12 months ago, then yes, we should delete them. I am, for me, I'm a big advocate of what I classify as negative tests. So I want to prove that if the rules are broken, it doesn't do what it should. There's an entirely different conversation piece on if that is negative or not, depending who you speak with. But for me, it's a case of if I don't satisfy the rule, I don't want it to do that. And I'm trying to test for a negative behavior. So I would start off by, well, what happens if someone does have an address, uh, account with us, but we don't change any of the, the rules because we know that if we follow all of this, it behaves. So if we change one thing, we say they now have an account. We don't expect them to be deleted. And then we change a different rule, but then we go back to, so we only make sure only one thing at a time is ever being invalid. 
So in this case, if they have ID, we don't expect them to be deleted. The reason I change only one thing at a time is if that test were to fail, it's much, much easier to narrow down what's causing the problem. So if a customer is being deleted and we did have their ID, we can go, this is what's going wrong. But if we tried to just say, right, flip everything and just go, they are less than um, or equal to 12 months old uh, in terms of contacts. We've got their ID. We've got their account. If we do delete them, we go, right, we shouldn't have. But it's much harder to narrow down the rule that's going wrong. And so, again, we can have an equal 12 and a less than 12. So there's only five tests there. But it works out 12 combinations. So there should be like, yes, account, yes, ID. There should be yes, account less than 12 months contacts and so forth. Um, so in theory, you could look at all those extra combinations on top. But if this proves to work and then we prove these individually, it's highly unlikely that a customer isn't deleted here and isn't deleted here. But if you add the two together, they suddenly are because that isn't how it should be done. So you could do it. But then you start getting down to the balance of what is my time versus reward for doing these tests and working it out. Um, so, yeah, this is how I like to work out what tests I want to do. So it is very um, like back end data that I do. But when I've done front end testing in the past where I, I might have a flow, so it's like, right, I expect to be able to open an account if I do all of these things. So if I do something else at one point, so you might go, this account is only open, uh, can only be opened if you are over 18 years old. Quite a common occurrence, at least in the UK, because you're legally an adult. If you don't tick the box or you put in a date of birth that makes you not 18, you could go with, right, can we open the account? No. Good, because we've changed that. But if you can still open the account, you could still have all of your options and go, right, we want to have this populated, this populated, this set to more than 18 years ago, so forth. You can still apply this premise through something front endy. It's not a purely back-end process you could use this with. Um, I was speaking with um, my lovely sister friend, Bruce. They've never done a matrix like this before. Um, when I was speaking with Ben, he is the one who calls it a truth table because most often it is, uh, you might have like, um, account exists, true, false. I prefer saying yes, no, because that way if I want variable things in there, it's much easier to control. Um, but as an initial stage, this is how I would think about what tests I want to go from there. Whilst it's not specifically for a test case matrix, something that I would encourage you to think about when you are designing your tests is what questions or gaps you might ask with these requirements. So if we go back to our initial requirements, no account, no ID, more than 12 months old. Well, what determines if they have an account or not? Can an account have more than one person on it? So at my workplace, you can have up to two people normally on a savings account, but you could have four people on a mortgage. Well, what happens if someone was on the account and then they got taken off for some reason? So they might have want to not be on the house, not be on that savings account. Well, they now no longer have an account, but is it they've never had an account or they just don't have an account now? If you had an account and then it got closed, does that count? Um, you might also want to find out between your uh, business analysts, your developers, your data architects, so forth, just to go, OK, what kind of tables am I looking for? So with ID, we actually discovered there were two different tables we use. We have um, current ID and previous ID, and it, it was possible to be in the previous ID table, but not the current ID table. And we need to look at both. So it would mean that if we were doing this, rather than just saying ID, 
we could actually name the individual tables, which then pushes this further because effectively you're saying rather than ID, it'd be like current ID, historic ID, and it doubles up your potential options every time. Um, at most, I ended up with, I think it was like 120, 150 potential test cases when I was working this out. And there was only really one or two um, positive tests, depending on the combinations, to go, yes, we expect them to delete. If all these things are true, some of them were optional, which can get very, very messy. But there's still all the things where you go, well, I don't want to delete them if these things aren't true. Excuse me. Um, because if you just wanted to delete the entire table that holds the customer, well done, you have deleted the people who meet your requirements. But for me, you go, if you delete the table, this is true. What's more important for me when I was doing this project, and I would want you to think about is, think about the word only. So only delete customers, because is it worse to not delete the people you should have or to delete the people you shouldn't have? Um, Cause that could be catastrophic. You delete the entire table. I've deleted all these people. I might have just also deleted people I shouldn't have. And that's, that's where the negative test for me is. I want to prove it hasn't done what it shouldn't more than has it done what it should. Cause if it hasn't done what it should, that's very apparent. But it can be very tricky to, um, to go, has it done anything beyond that? Um, and a very fun one was contact more than 12 months ago. What would they classify as contact? Um, so if someone um, requested a pack to apply for something but never opened it, does that count? If they called your contact centre, does that count? If they... Um, sent in a complaint because they tried to do something and weren't able to. So they didn't directly get in contact with us initially, but then would like to complain they couldn't do the thing they wanted. Is that contact? And it Always try and um, drill into your questions, but you can use your decision matrix, test case matrix, for like how I like to think of it, um, because ultimately each one becomes a test to go, right, are there questions that need answers? Um so if it's a front end, you'd be like, right, we've got to go through this page, this page, this page, and this is our flow. Well, okay, is there any way you can break the flow? Are there fields which are optional? Are there fields which are mandatory? These kind of things. So it can, I find it a very good way for if you do a lot of um, heavily scripted testing or if you like thinking about potential options, it's a great resource for me it really helps me think about what i want to do but it doesn't stop there you can use it to ask your questions to, to drill out more information i've also shared it with developers i've worked with and been able to prevent bugs before they got made so i shared the equivalent of this to my developers and they were going to delete customers when this equivalent was happening because they were treating the rules as equal to, well, pretty much not less than 12 years. Delete them if it's, uh, don't delete them if it's been less than 12 years. So if it was equal 12, they were going to delete them as well. We both can't be right, but it allows a query to get raised, push back to the business owners to go, right, what should be happening? Because either the developer has got a misunderstanding or I've got a misunderstanding. But either way, there isn't harmony between us. And so it could either prevent them pushing through code with a bug in it before I even touch it, or for me rejecting something only to find out that it's valid and it's me who's got it wrong, not the developer code. So sharing your matrix is really useful. I shared it with the project managers, with the business analysts, because they could very clearly see what we were wanting to do and why. Um, whereas potentially walls and walls of text, it can be very intimidating or if it's very detailed of we're going to do this, do this, do this, they might be like, I don't fully get it. But going with all these things happen, we should do this. Any of these things get broken, we change the rules, don't do it. So have a think of them, have a play at them. 
um, see if, if you're not already doing it, see if there's something you've worked on which it could be a, a, um, applied to. So ultimately, if there's any rules that you have to follow and they can be broken, so open an account where X is true, you can't open it. So age, or you could, if you worked in, say, gambling industry, you sold alcohol, something which is age restricted, straight away you've got a condition of a positive and a negative test where your matrix could help you out. You might say, um, like with online shopping, you might go, um, free delivery if you order over 50 pounds. Well, okay. You might do your price values and then delivery free. Yes, no. There's all sorts you can do this with. Um, so have a think about it, have a play. And I hope it's been useful for explaining what they are, but also how to use them and how they can benefit you. If there's something you would like me to explain, if it's something I do know, Put a message in the comments below, the classic cliche YouTube thing of comment below. You can um, also message me on Twitch if you use that. I'm at the Pirate Tester. They're probably the strongest ways to get hold of me. Um, I'm very, very active on Twitter. Um, you can message me on LinkedIn, but generally I'm not one for accepting re um, connection requests from people who I don't know. So you're probably not going to get the best response there. But yeah, message below if there's something you want me to elaborate on, explore, explore at some point. Um, or if you'd like me to go back over anything I've done in more detail, the next steps, so forth. So thanks for listening. I have been Lee, the Pirate Tester, and speak to you soon.